This video is brought to you by NCIX.com. Great technology, selection and service. So right after our data loss incident a few weeks back where the RAID 0 array failed on us due to an intentional power outage, it was time to look for proper backup solutions because storing everything uh, that isn't backed up and having no proper archiving system for our videos at the time was very, very disappointing. So we looked into network attached storage devices and we decided to check out the Western Digital MyCloud Mirror. The mirror in the name is the keyword here where it uh, clones everything from one drive to the other. So you have redundancy features in case one drive fails, you still have all the data on the other drive. And I think it suits my home environment pretty well, despite uh, Western Digital offering more business and enterprise solutions. Um, me having zero experience with any network attached storage in the past and having zero experience with sort of proper backup solutions, I thought this was a fitting place to start. So the MyCloud Mirror ranges in price depending on capacity available in two, four and eight terabytes. The main housing is very sleek with a curved front panel that displays the three main LEDs, one for power and the other two for uh, corresponding to each drive inside the unit. The top is ventilated and also grants you access to the actual drives, which are Western Digital Red. So they are designed to, you know, specifically for NAS situations. And by default, they are come pre-configured with a RAID 1 array. So everything from one drive is cloned to the other. So you have two identical copies in case one of these drives fails. Turning a total of eight terabytes into usable four, because everything from one drive is cloned to the other. Therefore, you only have four terabytes sort of to work with the storage. The RAID array can also be reconfigured into separate logical volumes, giving you uh, two separate four terabyte drives. Spanning configuration, giving you one large eight terabyte drive, but they're all together, RAID zero or the default RAID one. And given we want redundancy with our backup archive, we are sticking with RAID one. The rear I.O. consists of a power in, a Kensington lock, gigabit ethernet, that's important, uh, dual USB 3 and a needle reset switch. And so the MyCloud Mirror tries to be a simple plug and play solution, but it doesn't fully achieve that because it's a little bit more complicated than that. And for casual consumers who are not exactly into networking or not super tech savvy, this could cause a lot of confusion. The first thing you have to do is create a MyCloud account, which will be synced to your MyCloud Mirror. It's a very simple procedure but then it comes on to the software side of things that you have to download and sort of play around with that isn't super intuitive definitely needs polish so let's talk about that now the three softwares are WD Sync, WD Access, and WD Smartware. A software that is very powerful, but still needs to be simplified for you know, the casual consumers. Let's start with W Sync first. This is meant to be your bare bones of backup, dragging folders or files that you want to backup, select the desired destination on the NAS, or create a new folder, and you're good to go. Now the sync will kick in automatically, but not immediately which was a bit confusing in the beginning, making me think that I was doing something wrong. Uh, but eventually those files that I backed up have appeared on the NAS and I, you know, I was able to access them no problem. However, I would love to see a better visual indication on the progress of that backup and letting you know, um, let's see how long is left until those files are actually backed up and maybe have a little button that says stop and stop or pause or something like that so that you can actually have full control of when that transfer uh, is being made. Next is WD Access, which ironically is super difficult to actually access. So it doesn't have its own shortcut for the interface. Instead, it's uh, in the icons beside the clock, after which you can either upload files immediately to the MyCloud mirror, enter the online dashboard, or create shortcuts to the folders on your NAS. The most important function here is map in my opinion. So if you access files often as often, mapping your access is the most convenient way to enter the array. And the last piece of the software puzzle, if you want to schedule backups and have a better visual representation on the backup progress and seeing where which files are moving where is uh, WD Smartware. You have three activations, so it's awesome if you have multiple users uh, accessing the same uh, NAS. It's still not as intuitive as you'd want, but it is much more powerful than the other softwares uh, as long as you know how to navigate it. 
So the UI initially is a bit confusing, but once you learn it, it's pretty self-explanatory. So you first need to select your backup source, any of your disks that are on your computer, then the backup target. This is very useful if multiple NAS solutions are connected and you can also upload directly to the Dropbox or if any of USB devices are connected to a NAS, all will be visible here. So once that's done, we move on to the backup tab, which is by default presents with a stupid category backup, which to me, is almost counterintuitive because it will sort your files into giant mess of movies, music, other pictures, mail and documents. But don't be afraid, you can switch the file backup, which makes you know a ton more sense for anybody. Uh, so where you can tick off folders and actual files that you'd like to move to the NAS. And here you can also set a backup frequency, which is awesome, either continuous or scheduled and that is very much appreciated. And once you enable the backup, the program will continuously monitor anything new added to those backup folders, so you don't have to worry. Now, what about multiple users accessing or backing up to the NAS? That is all possible. You can enable FTP if you prefer that type of uh, protocol for sharing information, which by default is disabled. You can add multiple users with share access control. So for example, if I added Eber, so he can access the backup archive remotely from his home and we can share information. He can upload to it. And I even can uh, enable capacity quotas. So if he's uploading some to to the NAS, he doesn't fully just take over all the capacity and that's awesome. You can also access your entire backup archive through your smartphone thanks to the MyCloud app. It works well, hasn't crashed on me yet. I can access all the files that I, I have on there and you can also do the same thing from a remote computer uh, as long as you have the access. So if you want to share video files, if you want to have it as your HTPC on the remote side of things, you can definitely do that. You can also enable the uh, automatic video and photo backup from your phone directly onto the My Cloud, um, which is awesome. If you don't have the unlimited Google Photos or if you have a very tiny, unsatisfying 16 gigabyte iPhone. And the last thing I want to mention is usability on my level, where I've scheduled backups now on a daily basis, which I'm pretty happy with. But that initial setup, man, I highly dislike the fact that we have um, three softwares that you have to kind of work with to figure out which suits your backup workflow best. I don't like that. I, I wish there was just one suite that was intuitive, simple to use. Although I appreciate the under the hood functionality, all the sort of extra advanced features with user configuration, uh, group creation, and sort of, you know, in the end of the day, reliable backup to a RAID 1 array. So this being my first uh, time actually dealing with an NAS, I tried to look up other user reviews and consumer reviews uh, on the MyCloud Mirror. And there are two main issues that sort of clouds this product. One is related to speed. So actually transferring and reading and writing to the NAS and two, uh, non-static IP. So let me address the first one now. So the speed of the NAS in my experience is right where it should be depending on the ethernet switch with a 100 megabits per second port, the transfer speed is 10 megabytes per second, while plugging it into a gigabit port on your router grants you, you know, proper speeds close to 100 megabytes per second transfer speeds, which are fine for archiving and backing up stuff, but you know, it's not very good to actually using the NAS for any uh, sort of high-end processing. And now onto the non-static IP is by default, we have a dynamic host configuration protocol. So the IP address of the MyCloud mirror changes upon reboot or if your network changes. So this means you cannot access the dashboard through the previously used IP address through your browser. And this is where the WD access comes in handy by navigating into settings to open the new login for the dashboard. And so in the end of the day, the Western Digital MyCloud Mirror is a reliable backup solution, one that needs to have its setup and the UI interface changed to accommodate for less techie consumers, but all without ditching all those advanced features that makes this device extra valuable. I'm happy now that we have a finally uh, a proper archived backup for all of our videos uh, that any of the member on our team can access, but my only concern now is we are actually running out of space. The four terabytes has quickly filled up by almost three terabytes from just the videos that I've uh, we produced in the last six months alone. So yeah.
And so that concludes this review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. My first look at uh, a network related component. Let me know how I did with the comment below. If you have any advice or suggestions for future network component hardware reviews, uh, leave them in the comments down below. If you have any feedback on how we can reconfigure the NAS uh, to make it more better, let us know as well. So, well, that would be it. I'm Dimitri with Hover Canucks. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.